So investment banks probably are most um, aggressive customers in terms of the, the way they use data. The complexity of their products is the highest, they have the most number of products as well. Welcome to this masterclass series entitled Realizing the True Value of Data in Association with Click, looking at how different segments of the banking industry can better use the data at their fingertips to add value to the business. I'm Joy McKnight, Deputy and Technology Editor at The Banker, and I'm joined by Duncan Ash, Senior Director, Global Financial Services at Click. In Chapter 2 of this four-part video series, we'll be looking at how investment banks can use real-time data to allocate capital more effectively. Duncan, thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Joy. Um, can you tell me some of the data challenges for investment banks? Sure. So investment banks probably are most um, aggressive customers in terms of the, the way they use data. The complexity of their products is the highest. They have the most number of products as well. Um, and then data is coming in very, very quickly. So the, the data volumes are very high. Um, the frequency with which they need to act upon that information is, uh, is very high as well. So high complexity, high volume, lots of complex products. Not everybody in the process understands all of the products. So um, banks have to be able to deal with information on trades and positions, legal entities, um, FX rates coming in all, all the time. So, so lots and lots of different feeds of data and they need to be able to somehow uh, aggregate that into a form that they can work with and make sure that the data is, is clean and accessible and correct, then perform analysis against it. So there's an awful lot of work that happens mm. behind the scenes before any analysis gets done. What would you say is the business value in being able to better manage limits and exposures for investment banks? Sure. So well, the, the business value um, of managing limits and exposures is really around capital optimization. So. Mm. Um, banks want to make sure that the, the capital that they've got is, is allocated in the most effective way. Um, when they look at limits and exposures, we're looking at, um, they're, they're probably looking at their entire organisation. So capital has been allocated to, to different credit offices in different parts of an organisation. And um, each of those, those people in the process needs to make sure that that capital is allocated in the most effective way. Mm. So we might be looking for um, somebody or you know, a credit officer who maybe hasn't allocated their capital as effectively as they could do, try to understand which credits are performing well, which are not performing so well, and where where capital has been over allocated, then they maybe to bring it back, take it off the table so it can be reallocated somewhere more effective. So in this kind of process, how important is sort of an insight into real-time data? Well, real-time real data, it depends how you define real-time, of course, but uh, real-time data gives you um, it gives you additional um, value because um, see the, the sooner, sooner you can update your portfolio information, the, the, the sooner you can act against it. Um, but also, you know, when, when something changes fundamentally in the markets, you're going to make decisions very quickly about how you, um, how you react to that, um, how you hedge or how you, how you change what you're going to do going forwards. So um, the challenge isn't just that it's real time, but the challenge is that um, when, when an event happens, you need to bring information in from all the different places where you're trading. And in many of the, the organizations we work with here, that, that's a lot of different places. And we need to take a holistic view, not just a regional view of that information. So how does data aggregation really help in risk management? Sure. So um, in order to, well, I mean, from a regulatory point of view, for a start, uh, data aggregation is mandatory. So under uh, BCBS 239, banks have to uh, aggregate their data centrally and be able to report against that data effectively to the regulator. So that, that's kind of the, the baseline. Um, once that information is in place, then banks can use that to manage their capital more effectively and react more quickly to events that are happening in the markets. So when you, when you want to make it a, a, a strategic decision in, in how you're investing, then you can do that more quickly and more effectively and, and with a, a greater level of accuracy. Okay, and that obviously helps to improve customer relationship? Yeah, absolutely. So um, bank is looking at all the, the different counterparties who it's, uh, it's doing business with, and if they're, a, if they're able to, uh, to deal with their clients, their buy-side clients, more effectively or quickly and give them better advice, then, uh, then they will obviously uh, improve their customer relationship. Excellent. Thank you so much again for your insights, Duncan. Thank you. So in Chapter 3, we will look at how transaction banks can use data to best protect themselves and their customers from fraudulent behavior.